So, question number 21. Peter has a lock with a three-digit code. He knows that all the digits of his code are different. And that if he divides the second digit by the third and squares his answer, he will get the first digit. So what's the difference between the largest and smallest possible codes? First of all, after squaring his answer, he will get the first digit, meaning that the first digit itself is a square number. So it can be 9, 4, or 1, right? So the largest one is definitely going to be 9. So I need to find a second digit and a third digit, such that dividing the second one by the third one, I get the square root of 9, which is 3. So it can be 3, 1, 6, 2, or 9, 3. But all the digits are different. If I want the largest one, it has to be 6, 2 then, because it can't be 9, 3. Otherwise, the 9s will be repeated. Now, if I want to find the smallest possible one, it means that I need to look at, well, 1. But then, if something divided by something else is 1, it means that the second and the third digit has to be the same, right? But since all the codes are different, so it can't be 1, which means that I have to take the resort to 4. Now, what divided by what is having a 2 times relationship? So if you are choosing the smallest pair, it's going to be 1 and 2, isn't it? 2 is double that of 1, and all the digits are different. So now the difference between the maximum and the minimum possible codes is going to be 541. So the answer is E. Okay. And then for the second question, the diagram shows the front and right wheels of a solid that is made up of cubes of side 3 centimeters. So what is the maximum volume that it could have? So let's say this is the front view and this is the right view. So it means that this solid has to be within a scope of a 4x4 four four grid. Such that the front view is going to have 2, 1, 2, 1 as the tallest stacks in each region. And the right view is going to have tallest ones as 1, 2, 2, 1 in each uh, row, like tallest stacks in each row are 1, 2, 2, 1. So if I want to find the maximum volume, it means that I want to fill out this grid completely without missing any uh, boxes, so without any empty boxes, and also that all of them are as big as possible. But then we know that for the rows and the columns with a maximum of 1, These can only be ones, because otherwise it won't exist, or otherwise these numbers would be greater than ones, right? The tallest ones would, were, would definitely be greater than one if any of these are not ones. So after doing that, for the remaining ones, the maximum are two, so we are just filling the twos down. So all together, all together, we have uh, 12 of the ones and four of the twos. So 12 adding 4 times 2, that's going to be uh, 20 cubes altogether. Each cube has side 3 centimeters, so the volume is going to be 3 cubed, that is 27. So V is going to be 20 times 3 cubed, which is 20 times 27, that's going to be 5. 140 cubic centimeters. All right, so the answer is D for this question. And then for question 23, how many three digit numbers have an odd number of factors? So that's a number theory question. So, first of all, you need to know what numbers have an odd number of factors. Like, well, Factors come in pairs, right? So how would it be an odd number? It's only when I have a repeating pair. So for example, 4. 
it has 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So it has 1, 2, 3 factors because the repeating pair is not counted twice. So what does it mean? It means that only square numbers have odd number of factors. Okay? Only square numbers have odd number of factors. So essentially, it's asking you how many three-digit numbers are squares. That's what the question is asking. So the smallest one, of course, is 100, which is 10 squared. And think about uh, 1,000 squared. So we know that 31 squared is equal to 961. And 32 squared is equal to 1,024. So if you can memorize these uh, numbers, that will be great. But if you can't, it's fine. So it means that 31 squared works, 32 squared doesn't, because it has to be three-digit, right? So it doesn't work. Which means how many three-digit numbers are there? Uh, how many numbers are there from 10 to 31? So 31 take away 10, adding 1, that's 22. So the answer is E. All right? So question number 24. Molly, Dolly, Sally, Ellie, and Kelly are sitting on a park bench. So five positions. Molly is not sitting on the far right, and Dolly is not sitting on the far left. So this is not Dolly, this is not Molly. Sally is not sitting at either end, so both of them are not Sally either. Kelly is not sitting next to Sally, and Sally is not sitting next to Dolly. So it means that Sally is not sitting to Kelly or Dolly or at the end, which means that Sally has to be sitting between Ellie and Molly in any direction. All right, and then Ellie is sitting to the right of Dolly, but not necessarily next to her. So it means that, well, the Sally, Molly, Ali bundle is going to be taking three consecutive spots, no matter how. So Dolly, if not on the left end, if not on the left end, has to be right there. Yeah, that's to the left of Ali. Because Ali is to the right. Yeah. So now we know that Molly is not at the right end. So it means that the Ali, Sally, Molly um, combination doesn't work. Because then Molly will squeeze at the right end. So it means that the Molly, Sally, Ali combination would work. Because these three has to be stuck together with Sally in between Molly and Ali. So this is Kelly. Okay? So it means that the answer is Ali for E. And then the last question, I think this is a pretty common one. I've seen this question a hundred times already. Anna, Bridget and Carol run in a hundred meter race. When Anna finishes, Bridget is 16 meters behind her. So it means that when Anna is doing 100 meters, Bridget is doing 84 meters. So the speed of Anna to Bridget is equal to 100 to 84, which is 25 to 21. And when Bridget finishes, Carol is 25 meters behind her, which means that when Bridget is at 100 meters, Carol is at 75 meters. So it means that Bridget to Carol is 4 to 3. So the girls run at constant speeds throughout the race. How far behind was Carol and Anna finishes? So, well, 
basically I don't even need to find the ratio for and then Bridget because I know that Bridget to Carol is 43 so it means that when Bridget is at 84 meters Carol would be at 63 meters which is equal to 84 times 4 thirds uh, 3 quarters so 21 times 3 which is 63 meters so how far behind was Carol and Anna finishes? It's 100, take away 63, that's going to be 37 meters. So the answer is A. All right. So that's for questions um, 21 to 25. And that's everything for the 2015 JK paper.